This is my friend Regina. I like my cars loud and my keyboard silent. And this is her keyboard. It sucks. I hate this keyboard. Now, because of that, she, just like you, wants to build a custom keyboard. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you didn't want to build a custom keyboard and you're just wondering why I said that your office keyboard sucks. However, what if I told you there's a whole entire world that could be so much greater? Because in this video, I'm going to be giving Regina a free keyboard. Yay! Except what I didn't tell her is that she's going to be building it almost entirely <laughs> by herself. No, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. No. <laughs> but you're not Regina, right? So I will actually show you how to build a custom keyboard that's going to be infinitely better than your work keyboard. Way better. But there's actually one other problem because Regina, try this keyboard real fast. Ugh, that is way too loud. No, I'm going to get kicked out of the office. That was supposed to be thawky. Oh no. Ah, thawky, thawky, thawky. Ooh, okay. I'm checking. Why are there so many different boxes? Getting any work done? I don't want patience. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not that. I'm gonna be the coolest girl in office. You Nothing. hear that? It's silent. In order to build a custom keyboard, there's only three things you need to do. However, there is a really important way of doing them. First, you need to pick your switches, and then your keyboard, and then your keycaps. However, there's a really important factor here, and that's preference. There's a lot of different subcategories and it's really overwhelming. Don't think about it. I'm overwhelmed. Don't think about it too hard. Okay. Now you're probably wondering, Hippio, how do I do this at home? I don't have a personal keyboard YouTuber that I can go to for any of my wishes. I mean, first of all, you do. Just hit subscribe. But a great place to start is finding out which of the three core switch styles that you like. That's linear, tactile, or clicky. If you have previous keyboard experience, that's great. If not, I recommend you walk into your Best Buy and just start trying a bunch of different keyboards. Now, those keyboards won't be nearly as good as the one we're about to make. However, it gives you a good baseline. But what if you want something more silent? It's nothing because it's a quiet keyboard. Well, we're gonna talk about that later. So to figure out what she liked best, I gave Regina a tactile, linear, and clicky keyboard. But let's just say her choices were uh, unexpected. Give them a shot. Uh, it's so loud. Too loud? What do you mean? That's like thawky. I feel like everybody in my other, in the other cubicles are going to be mad at me because I type fast. I'm a... Now, Regina had a problem with this keyboard being too loud, and part of that reason is actually how it's built without much dampening foam. However, that is a tactile keyboard. When you press it, there's a little bit of a bump. Do you oh, like the bump? I don't know. I need to try other ones. Okay. Next is linear, which is the purple one in the center. I feel like I like this one. Nice and smooth. Quieter. Yeah. Now, the linear keyboard was stuffed with foam, so it was quieter. But what would Regina think of the last one? The clickies. I can already tell I'm not going to like this one. See? I knew it. Ah! <laughs> no, 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 not that. This sounds like the type of keyboard that my husband used to play on, and it would make me really upset being near him. Is that true? Oh, yeah. Uh, also, shout out Josh. If you like this style of video, I've done a very similar one with Josh. I definitely that okay. would get me so, kicked out of the office. Clicky is off the table so you don't get kicked out of the office. With clickies out, this left us between linears and tactile, which is a very common choice. I think I like this one because it's quiet. Like, if I cover my ear. <laughs> <laughs> you like the feel of a tactile yeah. bump, but maybe yeah. not the aggressive sound. Yeah. Of that specific case build. Yes. Okay. That's the amazing thing about keyboards is that with sound, you can customize basically everything by adding foam, removing foam, lubing oh, yeah. switches. Okay. You ever heard of lube? Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to make those jokes around girls? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Now, with the switch feel decided, there was actually still one problem we had to resolve with a trick up my sleeve. There's actually a fourth type of keyboard. Give that a <laughs> shot real fast. Oh, yeah. I, look, do you hear that? Oh. Do you hear that? You don't because it's a silent keyboard. It's so nice. Now, silent keyboards are silent because of their switches. And you can actually have tactile or linear 
silent <laughs> switches. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> So we've narrowed it down to silent tactile switches and I'll be getting back to the exact switch later. But first, we have to figure out something even more important and that's layout. What size keyboard do you even want? Size? Size. Because if you looked at all of those keyboards that you tried, you might have noticed some of them are maybe missing keys. Now, in order to pick your keyboard, you actually need to know what size keyboard you want. So the best way to do that is figure out what keys you want to get rid of. Then for picking your keyboard, you need to figure out what fits in your budget. Now, obviously you will know what keys you need the best. And a lot of you might be saying, Hippio, I need a numpad. Numpads are essential. Well, there are plenty of full-size keyboards out there like the Keychron Q6, but they are a little bit more uncommon when it comes to custom keyboards. So what a lot of people do is they get a really nice custom keyboard and then they get a separate numpad for if they wanna bring it to work or something. What do you wanna sacrifice? This is like just that okay now even more important than finding your keyboard layout is finding keycaps that actually fit it so i'll be talking about that later oh, yeah. all right regina uh, <laughs> oh my oh, gosh uh. <laughs> Now, based on Regina's preferences, I've picked out a keyboard from my sponsor, Nufi, which is the Gem 80. If you're doing your own research and trying to find a keyboard at home, then just go on the layout, budget, and fun features journey. Sounds fun. Now, what is that journey, you might ask? Well, because keyboards are so preference, I can't tell you exactly what keyboard to buy. I can just show you a lot of keyboards that I think are cool. You can get a heavy keyboard made out of aluminum or a high quality keyboard made out of polycarbonate. There's features like knobs and screens and software and Hall effect switches and just figure out what you like the best. <laughs> Now, let's start with the keyboard, and then we'll get into the other stuff first. Why are there so many different boxes? Don't worry. Don't, we're, we'll start with the keyboard. Why can't it just be in one? We're, All right, fine. We're going right, to start with the keyboard. Fine. I'll do it. Okay. Ugh. Wow, they make you work for it. <laughs> okay. All right. Paperwork, whatever. <laughs> That's the spirit. Ooh. Ooh. A little cleaning action. Microfiber cloth. Do I need to read to be good at keyboards? I, yeah, I think that's like a bare minimum requirement, actually. Oh, that's cool. Oh. Cable. <gasps> Wait, this is perfect because. Oh, don't stretch it like that. Oh my God. Now the Gem 80 is actually a really interesting keyboard because it gives you so many different options for how to build it. And I think that's really what sets it apart in the beginner keyboard space. These are ways that you can customize the sound and the feel of your keyboard. And you probably won't care about them as much as a beginner, but eventually you might actually really care. Now at 150 US dollars for the bare bones version of this keyboard, it isn't exactly budget friendly at all. And in fact, there are other keyboards that are a much better value. However, what this keyboard does offer- Hashtag Gem series. Wait, really? Hashtag gem series. No way, they put a hashtag on the box. Hashtag. Is the ability to add on switches and keycaps for a very affordable price, which makes the full build actually quite competitive. Now, as I mentioned before, Nufi is a sponsor, so I'll have everything linked down below, but I do want you to know that when I work with a keyboard brand, they cannot alter what I say and they do not review my final video. So all of my thoughts are my own. Now, this is just one example of a 10 keyless keyboard that you can go with, but if you wanna build it yourself, I do think that the add-ons that Nufi offers are more compelling than some of the other brands. Like, I like their switches and keycaps more than I like Keychrons, for example. Now, if all of that is a little bit too overwhelming, then we'll just take it back one step and get to building the keyboard itself. But how do you think you're gonna build it? I don't know. Well, maybe put more of these things in. The switches. Like, those gotta be in there. They gotta go first, right? And then you do the little keycaps. <laughs> and then you click back, click back. Okay. <laughs> now, earlier, you did find out your favorite switch preference. These right here are Wuche Studios silent tactile switches. Ooh. Now, no sound. Oh yeah. You Nothing. hear that? It's silent. Now, silent switches are rapidly becoming very popular because people realize that even though thocky keyboards are incredible, getting fired is not. <laughs> Yeah. In a way, I kind of see keyboards like cars, where if you're customizing your car, that's great. Yeah. But if you customize your car and you remove your like muffler or whatever, and you make your car loud as hell. It's cool. You're a terrible person. No, it's cool. You Don't suck. No, you're really cool. If your car makes loud vroom vroom noises. You're really, really And you cool. drive around in public with it. You're really I cool. I hate you. No, I love you. It's really cool. <laughs> you're literally the <laughs> scum. 
I like my cars loud and my keyboard silent. <laughs> so first step is you're going to take these switches and um, Please, sir. <laughs> how do you think you put them into the keyboard? Well, if I'm modeling what I see here, well, I'm just going to smush it in. That's backwards. Oh, it's backwards. What do you mean backwards? It's a square. <sighs> there you go. Oh, really? Yep. Ah! Oh, <laughs> there you put your first switch in. And how Yay! many more to go? Like, um, too many to count? 86. An obnoxious amount? 86 more to go. Why can't it just come, you know, made the way? <laughs> okay, anyways, we're gonna take this and we're gonna perform some magic. Ready? Wow! <laughs> yeah, the magic is a lie. You actually have to put in all 86 oh. switches yourself. You're not gonna just do it behind camera? Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll stay behind camera and you no, do it. No, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, have fun. <laughs> Now, Regina, it's very important. <laughs> Why do you look so mad? What now? I don't have patience. <laughs> it's really important when you put in your switches that you make sure that the pins on the switches are not bent. You see this switch, how one of the metal pins is bent? If you were to put this into your keyboard, uh -huh. it, you would have a chance that you'd either pop out the socket or the switch just won't work. So do I have to check all of these? It's very important to check your switches before putting them in. Oh, okay. I'm checking. <laughs> <laughs> this has become like my video with like the most attitude of any video I've Are ever filmed. Are you filmed. surprised? You I, know me. I, I, I'm not surprised. Also, just one last thought on switches. When buying a switch, there's factory lubed and unlubed switches. I recommend for your first time going with factory lube switches and seeing how you like them. However, there is a pretty big spectrum for factory lubing, so I recommend you look up a sound test of the switch beforehand. You might notice there is something very important missing. The keys. The, the keycaps. Now, as far as keycaps goes, there's a few very important things that you need to know so you don't waste your money. Number one is layout. Now, there's actually a subcategory for keyboard layouts, like the bottom row could have different sized keys between the same 65% keyboard. Look out for your bottom row keys, your spacebar, and your shift key. You'll see these little layout pictures you just need to make sure that the keys are gonna fit. Number two is material, because there's a bunch of different keycap materials. There's PBT, ABS, there's even metal keycaps, but we don't talk about these anymore. There's also different profiles. Like, you notice how this one is entirely flat across the whole entire row? Yep. On this board, it's not, and they actually sit at like an angle. This is cherry profile, which is the most normal, but then you've got a bunch of weird stuff. And really at the end of the day, it all comes down to preference. Ultimately, if you have no idea what to get, I recommend you start with cherry profile keycaps just because they're the most widely available and also the least offensive. This is what I use every single day, but some people swear by other profiles and other keycap materials and just try a bunch of different stuff and find out what you like the best. You can always buy something from Amazon and then return it. I didn't tell you to do that though. Now, a little while ago, I gave Regina this octopus themed desk mat and she's in love with it and wants this keyboard to be themed around it. So, uh... I just want cool looking keycaps because everybody else is gonna see them and be like, wow, so cool. They're not gonna feel them. <gasps> Well, there's actually a keycap set that is supposed to go with this keyboard. So I'll let you start and tell me if you like this set or not. Are they cool or do they suck? Let's find out. Hashtag gem <laughs> Oh, wait. These are really pretty. I like the lilac. I feel like it goes really well, like the colors. Now, these are the gem MSA keycaps, which typically sell for 34 bucks. But if you buy this keyboard, then they're only 15, which makes them unbelievably cheap. They're pretty solid double shot PBT keycaps. However, they're at a weird profile. Okay, so there's been a new development. Even though you at home, if you're buying this keyboard, should probably go with the gem keycaps, considering they're literally only $15. So they're a great value, uh, provided you can get over the weird profile. Uh, Regina couldn't get over the weird profile. I found a keycap set, polycaps, octopus or something that perfectly matches the desk mat. So we're gonna be going with the octopus keycaps. Mm -hmm. The super easy part is just putting them on. So we don't even need to film this. We're just gonna use magic. There's no magic. Uh, magic is real. Please subscribe for more magic. Uh, she's lying. Okay, we will, we will. <laughs> pen, pen alert. 
bent pin alert. So you know how earlier I mentioned no. bent pins? No, you didn't. We were testing the keyboard to see if it works and uh-oh. If one of your keys doesn't work on a keyboard that you just built, there's a good chance that you bent a pin. I didn't do anything wrong. Now fixing it is super easy with some tweezers. Bend it back. I'm trying to do this one handed. This is really difficult. I'm really <laughs> talented though. There you go. Now with keycaps, it's also worth noting budget. Like there's really fancy keycaps like GMK, but honestly, I think they're a tinge overpriced. But generally the rule of thumb is if you want the sounds to be a little bit deeper, you go with Dysub PBT or a really tall profile keycap. And if you want the board to sound a bit clackier, then you should go with a double shot keycap or something made out of ABS. Now you're probably wondering what I think of the Gem 80, considering I am looking at this keyboard for Regina to build it as her first keyboard. Now, personally, I think it's a little bit overpriced as you could get a fully built keyboard with similar specs for about 106 US dollars. Although you are making some cuts like software and everything like that. But what this keyboard does do differently that I think is really unique is having everything available right on the site when you purchase it. There is something to be said about letting you have the choice of your switches and keycaps, but then also letting you build it yourself. And then also not having to do the research yourself is a bit of a perk as I've noticed a lot of you just want me to tell you exactly what to buy. Jeez. But it's time for Regina to take it for a spin and see, was it worth all of the trouble building a custom keyboard? Okay. Woo! I'm actually am amazed with how clean this looks. It looks so good. I love all the different purples. Yeah. I think it's so good. I want to go use it right now. Okay, let's do a type test. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm not good at typing. <laughs> let's play Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so quiet. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm gonna be the coolest girl in Office. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> People aren't even gonna know that I'm typing in Office. They're gonna be like, oh my gosh, girl, like, did you get that report done? It sounded like you were doing nothing over there. I was typing. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to your old keyboard. Which I need to say, I'm very grateful. Please do not fire Regina. Yeah, I really like my job. Like, I don't even wanna, like. You built a custom keyboard. You found your preferences. What do you have to say for yourself? I'm really happy. This is really good. Silent. Thank you, Hippio. I learned a lot today. If you have to give one piece of advice to somebody building their first keyboard, what hmm. would it be? Be really good friends with Hippio. Or if you can't do that, follow his YouTube at least. Yay! <laughs> he didn't pay me to say that. 